Good evening. Hey, how you doing out there in cyberspace? Here we are, third week of January. January, what, 21st today? Uh, boy, I'll tell you, time flies, don't it? Time flies like the wind. Boy, get out of work now and it's still it a little like bit uh, light out. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, well, my, my wife was telling me the other night, look at it, it's half past four, it's quarter to five, it's still light out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, going up, going up to the nine o'clock light out, you know what I mean? Uh, mm hmm. We're getting there. But then the problem with that is, you know, middle of June, you start going the other way. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, it goes by fast. Okay. Yes, Good to does. see y'all. I missed the last show. They had uh, my old sidekick. Ron was on with Ed. Ron was on, and uh, uh, you were unavailable. You were at a, a school committee meeting. First school committee meeting, yeah. Did, did you bring up anything, by the way, about having that televised? Or is, is, is the uh, mayor against it? Or what? No, no. no. The, but we do have a subcommittee meeting coming up uh, end of the month I've got to go to, and that's uh, one of the things on the agenda. I was pleased to see. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. A, I'm on a, the policy committee, uh, which... Should be uh, should be interesting, but uh, they did mention uh, something about having it televised, and it's uh, very difficult the way that it had been when it was over Berkshire Bank, the school committee, and uh, it wasn't very conducive to going to a, a meeting like the city council is, where you had a lot of room and space, and uh, it was just more welcoming. It's the environment was kind of tough, and the uh, with so many people vested in the schools with their kids. I would always wish that there was more parents there. I mean, there's teachers there, there's principals there, and it's it's very well attended. Uh, and it was it was an interesting interesting meeting. Well, you would, you would probably find out that if you're doing it in the city council chambers, you'll get more people down there. Well, that's what that's what I'm hoping you for. Know? That's what I'm hoping for. Because I mean, all these people are on Facebook that are saying, you know, hey, the future, our kids are are the future. They could come down. Mm -hmm. I know it's uh, it was kind of difficult for them to be upstairs over. The bank for for a long time, but yeah, was, that that wasn't a good environment. No, it wasn't, it wasn't. So we'll see, and I don't know if it would be uh, be live. I don't think it would be. I had talked to Dave a couple of years ago, and uh, as far as just recorded, but it'd be good for the people to see what goes on in the uh, meeting. And, and not this isn't something that you know cast aspersions or doubts. I just think it's very well uh, that people should be able to watch it, see what the issues are, see how things are handled. If they have questions or things, they can go to the meeting. And like I said, it probably won't be live, but I, I don't know what's going to happen now. We'll wow. be talking about it at <coughs> I the I don't uh, think it needs meeting. to be live. It doesn't have to be, no. no. It doesn't have to be live. It's not going to be a <coughs> call-in, of course. Yeah. But, uh, if you do <coughs> want to call in here on this show, the uh, number is at the bottom of your screen, 664-4408. And uh, feel free to call in and ask either uh, Bob or myself a question that you have uh, concerning anything about North Adams, the history, the, where we're going, where we've been, uh, what's coming up. Uh, yeah. I you, had a few. Go ahead. Go, go ahead. No, go, I, got, I, got, I got my. You got an agenda here. I, I got a bunch okay. of stuff. And right. The only thing ahead. I wanted to say tonight before you got into it was I could see, you know, by the Newsweek, what you're looking at. If you watch the impeachment, if you watch the Senate trial, um, watch. Don't listen to the, everybody that speaks afterwards from CNN or Fox, ABC, NBC, or all the BC channels. Uh, use your own conclusion of what's going on. Uh, you don't have to be told uh, what they said. You, you watch it yourself, so use your own judgment on what's going on. But I know that's going to fall to the wayside because a lot of people like to to have somebody tell them what happened. Mm -hmm. Somebody could stand there for a half an hour and speech on protecting the environment, and when it gets all through, they say, what were they talking about? Mm -hmm. So, I like that uh, cover of that magazine you got in front of you. Yeah, it's a, I, do, I do a lot of uh, reading. I don't do a whole lot. I, I kind of poke around the computer, but I do read. I get a lot of magazines and read different uh, different views, different venues, just like watching TV. I do watch <clears throat> several different news stations, uh, bits and pieces, not like I used to. I used to spend a couple hours a night watching them, and now I, I don't. But uh, what I'd probably like to start with tonight is my first city council meeting. After two years of not being on the council, it was an interesting meeting. There was a 
couple other new counselors and uh, Paul Hopkins was our new president and uh, that I thought was a very well run meeting and it was it was nice to be back it was just like old old times, old times again you know it's like riding a bike you get back in there it's, it's very very comfortable uh, I enjoy it and it was a pretty good meeting it was uh, there's was some issues on there a uh, couple different uh, things I had issues with and I again my paperwork on that is at work I forgot to take it to go through the agenda but uh, nothing huge but one thing that did concern me that we had oh man look at this guy hey. look at this guy <laughs> boy I'll tell you, that's why he gets the big money <laughs> truly why he gets the big money <clears throat> don't read my notes <laughs> yeah that's okay uh, you know we went to the uh, mayor's communication uh, time for Santee to present a parking study which I've been on the council this is my sixth term and uh, we've had many <laughs> many uh, downtown parking studies done and uh, what they want to do and different ideas and I got it that's good you get a grant you spend the money you, you look at your options we do have a lot of parking downtown uh, and they had it it was, it was pretty interesting of uh, how they had it cordoned off and where it is and what's the best thing to do so we'll go on from that uh, then there was a $71,000 stabilization transfer of money uh, you know looking for the uh, analysis of the city's sewer system I've said this before my opinion we do have a very old antiquated uh, sewer system it's just you know we're not unusual most communities do the to replace it I mean, you were literally talking tens of millions of dollars, but I don't know if they do it just a total replacement. They may do a stretch, maybe Williamstown, uh, you know, several miles. But uh, for what it would cost, and it's, uh, I'm not huge on kicking a can down the road, but uh, it almost, like I said before, it's almost not a bad idea you kick it down the road. To go out for bond, uh, I don't know what it's going to cost, what the time is. But for right now, you know, until the state comes up with something or there's a different type of funding and uh, get a better handle on it and maybe we become flush with money, uh, I'm good with let's fix the leaks, you know, when a leak happens, well, go well, fix you, it. This guy got a couple notes there and I'll <clears> just um, elaborate on. One of the things is um, it amazed me that the last study was done in 1999 and I believe that time Town was asked to transfer all their influent water that's coming in off the streets into a water catch system, mm -hmm. all right, and leave the sewer system alone. And I believe that they went through a lot of digging up and a lot of remodeling, because uh, I know my friend, uh, the, the late Dick Peterson, was the head of the water department over there, and he went through an awful lot, and they spent a lot of money over there, all right? And now I'm looking at, the, I looked at this, and I went online and checked it out, 1999, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some stuff out here. There was 11 known illegal hookups to our system. There's still 11 illegal hookups to our system. Nothing has been done about them. I mean, you're, now you're spending $71,000 for a company to go out there and check the 285 buildings and the 11 illegal hookups. But then you gotta do something about it. They found these 11 hookups back in 1999. Nothing's been done. Uh, it, it, it seemed to me like it's a, not a waste of money. They're going to uh, elaborate and, and point out where the water is coming in and everything else, but we're not going to be able to fix it. I'm sorry. You said maybe you were m more on the ball than I am because I said it's going to cost from zero to $4 million <coughs> just to do the illegal hookups and the changing of the water thing. It was mentioned uh, at the meeting that some of these are, are uh, roof drains, some pumps in somebody's house. Well, if they know what they were back in 1999, why the heck didn't they change it? Mm -hmm. Why didn't they go after these people? I don't know. I, that's why you're on the council and I'm not, mm -hmm. because I just oh. blow my tap at the meetings because I had four pages of stuff to read at the meeting and I was allowed two minutes to do it. I know mm -hmm. that's the rules, and I, I, I gotta go by the, the council rules. It's the same for everybody. 
Uh, two minutes, I, you just can't explain stuff in two minutes. I told you to run. <laughs> I told you what my <laughs> wife said. My wife said, Ed, if you really want to run for council, go down and get the paperwork. And when you come home, I'll have your bags back. Okay. And that, that, I don't blame her, really. I mean, I don't know how Bonnie puts up with you being on the school committee, the, the council, and, and uh, the parish council, and a few other things. Yeah. Well, well it's, uh, I, li I like to keep busy. But, uh, you do. Yeah, as far as, it, just for like engineering expenses. And uh, it's ironic because years ago, uh, Ron, he was uh, on the uh, Who's a Quality Water you know, the waste water treatment plant over there. And uh, I, I had attended some meetings over there and it's run over there by Mr. Furlong who does a wonderful job and we're together with Williamstown. And what we pay is based on the water, the inflow that uh, goes into the system. And when I first got on the council, it was very close to 50-50. And actually I, I believe Williamstown might've been a little bit ahead of us. But where we run into problems with our, our sewer system is if you have a, a manhole, and instead of that manhole running into a brook or into a river, if it goes into your sewer, you pay for that. Yeah, yeah. So we have a problem with there, uh, with that, and it has to do with crack pipes and uh, many, many, many issues from an old, old system. So ironically, uh, I was also appointed the liaison to the Northern Berkshire Quality. <laughs> I, I do have a little bit of uh, experience over there, and actually tomorrow morning I'm going to stop over there and see uh, Mr. Furlong, who does a fine job. I've known him actually since he was a, a little boy, and uh, he's been over there a number of years, and I want to uh, kind of talk to him and see what's going on, what's changed, what's on the uh, horizon what kind of expenses we have over there because we split everything. I mean, if, if they need something over there, pumps or equipment, uh, that's a North Adams, Williamstown, a 50-50 split. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll, I'll talk to him tomorrow and uh, just to get a little bit of a, an idea. And uh, they meet monthly and I'll be going over to the, uh, to the meetings and, and finding out what's going on and and bring that back to the council. One of the, one of the things that bothered me was when they, they said that some of the manholes are hooked into the sewer system. Yeah. Well, I, 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 do, I don't know. Now that shouldn't be, when you, I you was pay for that. When I was working, they were called, the square ones or catch basins, the round ones were manholes, mm -hmm. all right? And manholes usually had electrical wires running through them, uh, conduits, uh, communication wires, underground cables, and catch basins took your water off the street. Yeah. Sewer lines, there was no, there should be none on the street that empty into the sewer line. You should have a private sewer line that runs, septic line that runs out, mm -hmm. and you hook up from the, your house. Now, I don't know how 11 people hooked up onto this line illegally. I, I remember there was some issues with a, a one or two households in Clarksburg, and you know, I, I don't know either. Uh, some of it may be manpower. Uh, some might just be, you know, done under darkness. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but it's, the light? Uh, you gotta be I'm, dangerous. You got an open flame. Uh, I gotta <laughs> turn him. It's, it's this feather pointing at my nose is getting annoying. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So we'll have the engineering uh, study done and see what happens there. But I'll be coming back with more on uh, that after I've gone over there and. Talk to Mr. Furlong and go to a couple meetings over there. Give me another meeting to go to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what night they meet, but I guess I'm going to find out tomorrow. Uh, let's see. And then we have uh, one of the ones I had a little issue with was the, uh, the mayor requesting time for an update on the public safety building. For those of you who don't know, uh, they appropriated over $500,000 to redo the roof. The roof, I mean, I, I've known policemen over there, and uh, I remember talking to them two years ago. I was in there just talking to some officers and getting a, walking around a little bit, and they were telling me about the, the, the windows, how uh, one of the sergeants was doing a report at the desk, and it was snowing out, and it was literally snow inside, inside the building. Uh, 
probably original windows. Then they had the, the roof leaks. You know, it's flat roof, you know, northeast, uh, a problem. A lot of, lot of water problems in the fire department, in the police department. So they appropriated 500000 plus last year to get this roof done, and they started it. And as you know, Ed, know. Our, our church, St. Elizabeth, we have a parish center, which is probably two times the square footage uh, of the public safety building. And ironically, both at the same time, we were getting roofs done. So they, they both started in the summertime and go to church and just drive them by. You saw the quite a bit of extensive work and work started over at the public safety building. And I have a family member who works very close by. And I can remember him talking about, you should have seen the parking lot. We came into work and there was white tiles and roofing material all over the the parking lot over there. It was a mess and uh, had you know, the, the total mess. Then for an extended period of time, 32, 34 days, nobody showed up over there. Nobody showed up at all. I couldn't no figure one. that one out. I, I, they don't know why. Well, after 34 days, I would have thought somebody <laughs> would have done something. Like I said at the council, I was a little bit ticked off. If I'm in business, if I ignored something for 34 days, uh, I would have heard about it. I can't believe it didn't seem like anybody was was up on what was going on. I don't know what the, I'm not a construction guy, but I know when you have a, a, a project, usually there's a clerk of the works. And I know when I asked, I said, well, we had an engineer and every two or three days he went over and, and checked on the work to see how it was done. Well, somebody missed something. I wanted to, was wondering about what happened to the 34 days nobody showed up. When the engineer went over there, what did he, I mean, I just... There was nobody from the city checking on it. it yeah, that, that upset me. So our project over at the parish center is done and complete. This, this thing is still going on. So, I mean, they are looking into it. Uh, if there was water damage, they're going to have some studies and uh, do some tests. My biggest thing is the long term, uh, what's going to happen. So if, if everything checks out, we still get the warranty. Uh, I'll be okay with it, but stuff like that—it's just—it's uh, just against my grain. And not to put the blame on anybody, because they can figure out the blame. Who's to blame? But uh, you've got to uh, keep up on it. I mean, it's taxpayer well, money. It's there's people in charge. There should be people in charge. And one of my biggest things. And things like this is accountability. I want to be able to go back and say, why, how come, <clears throat> what was done, why wasn't it done, and be able to talk to one person It's accountable. And it, I guess it's like a baseball team. It all comes back to the mayor, but the mayor has good people under him, but somebody totally missed the boat on that, and that, that did bother me, but hopefully... Uh, Things well, are the only good news I heard out of the whole thing is that Foster Lewis is now the yeah. clerk of the works. Yeah, and there's a good man out there, a very good and, man. I've known, and, and I gotta tell you something. I gotta tell you something when, uh, oh, what was his name? John, remember John used to be the clerk of the works, Old John Law, or John, John Law was at one time, but after him, there's John, uh, uh, name he, he, he escaped from my mind again along with other things. Uh, he was a good clerk of the works. He always used to be on a job. He didn't show up periodically. He was there every day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got outside people doing work. I mean, you've got to have somebody looking over things like that. And, uh, and Foster, Foster is good, but uh, is good he, has, he, he wears a few hats. On. He knows what has to go on. Yeah. I mean, you're giving a, you're giving a contract of what has to be done and everything else, and you, you just make sure they follow it. Yeah. Yeah. So that uh, was one of my big issues uh, brought up. Hopefully that's going to be resolved and everything will work out okay. Oh, it will be. It will be resolved. Uh, yep. Yep. But it uh, didn't a, have to happen. Was there a timeline fine on that? If you didn't I, uh, you run far, over for 20 days, you pay 2000 a day or something? I wasn't involved in yeah. any, of the, uh, any of that. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it turns out. Go from there. 
Then the next one was uh, <laughs> something else that just <laughs> hasn't, hasn't gone away for a long, long time. Uh, it wasn't during my time for the most part, but, uh, well, part of it was, but out of my hands is the uh, communication put forward by Councillor Harpin and Jason LaForest on the pillar art. And I'm sure most people are aware of what that is, the pillars underneath the overpass when they had those cute little caricatures, caricatures uh, which I thought were pretty, pretty neat, you know, something nice to look at. And there was a big question once they got painted over gray. Uh, it was a form, some, someone had a form of artwork from Mass Mocha and who, the question is who said that they could be painted, who said that could be covered up, uh, and now there's kind of a deal of, of ownership here. And that, that went on for quite a while. Uh, one thing I was glad to see, and one thing I did say, is where it's going to our uh, city solicitor, and who's responsible, who can do what, because there's been litigation from other communities who've had similar things, who've lost one to six million dollar lawsuits. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna go to our city solicitor and we can go back and forth on this forever and debate it of what you like, what you don't like, who done it, who shouldn't have done it. But like I, I said during the meeting, I hopefully, it's gonna go to the city solicitor, he's gonna come back and say, that art can be brought back, or that art, the ownership of that is to Mass Mocha. And for once, before we go any further, we can just end it and, and find out and, and learn from this experience because it's gone on for way too long and uh, nobody really knows. And both sides can have their... Uh... Well, in the past, in the past, and I, I've dealt with this also in different <laughs> things, different uh, committees that I was on, not on the city, but off the city, but doing things like I uh, was involved uh, in, I forgot what year it was, 1970, uh, I have to say 75, 74, that uh, we decided to honor a North Adam native uh, who's in the Hall of Fame, Jack Chesbro. Mm -hmm. So what we did is, uh, and I'm talking about the Sons of Italy, what we did is we had a committee that went out and got bids on different plaques and so forth, and we asked the mayor that time if it's okay if we went down and put a plaque up. And he said, sure, go ahead. And we did. And it wasn't two months later, we were back at, at city council saying, who authorized you to do that? Mm -hmm. You know? And no one. And I, I said it at the city council. I mean, you probably heard me. Uh, I know some of the councils were busy flipping their pens or talking to somebody or looking on their computers. That no one in the city has the right, no one, as a city, in the city has a right to tell somebody to do something on public land unless it goes through the city council. This is why I took uh, six months of, of getting things organized and putting my ducks in a row when I wanted to put up the signs for the sister city for Italy. I made sure that I got approval from the city council before I even put them, even ordered them. So mm -hmm. whoever started with the art, the, the middle C uh, sound barrier under the bridge. Uh, there's no documentation that, that the city council voted them to do it. Uh, same hand, there's no documents on the city that said that the people, the kids could paint over those columns with the um, historical, and those were historical figures that were made, for, and uh, ironically, Arnold Printworks, where Mass Smoke mm -hmm. is now, they, were, uh, they came to the North Adams Historical Society and borrowed one of our books to get the figures out of there, and they painted it, but there was no documentation that said that the city council gave them the okay. Then again, the third time was Mass Mocha covered them up, and they had no documentation saying that they could cover those yeah. figures up. Yeah. So you're, you're in a kind of a pickle here, you know? You, like you said, uh, you know, Mass Mocha could sue. The artist to put the, the figures up could sue. That's why I'm so glad it's going to city solicitor just yeah. to well, who's the city solicitor put this now? to bed. That's out of town. Uh, oh, that's good. Contracted. Yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I always liked it when we had a city solicitor here. You could 
John DeRosa, when he had a question, you get on the phone, call up, and you know, yeah, uh, but you couldn't, you couldn't get an answer. You uh, couldn't have somebody from Donovan and O'Connor give you a, a legal uh, writ on this because they are renting from Mass Mocha, yeah. so that would oh, be yeah. a conflict. You know, the same way with John DeRosa, when John John was a good city solicitor, but uh, he couldn't give you anything that was uh, in conflict with, you know, the city and Mass Mocha or the city and and uh, the redevelopment authority. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna see. Hopefully, uh, it'll come back, and the uh, we'll have a very definitive answer, uh, one way or another. And it's, it is ironic because three or four years ago, when I was on the council, we formed a, a, an art commission, which all this was going to go through. So I mean, you've got now you've got you know the art commission who was involved in it. You have the city who was involved in it. You have Mass Smoke and the artist was involved in it. So I don't know who has true ownership. I guess hopefully we're going to find out to put this thing to put the, the bed one way or another. Or another. Yep. So that was kind of what went on at the uh, my first meeting back. And uh, we'll see what goes on there. And <clears throat> excuse me, under counselor's concerns was one of my biggest issues. Uh, most people don't know about it, but it was probably six weeks ago. One evening, uh, I had a niece was driving home up Union Street at nighttime. I'm not sure what time of the night it was, but as she came up, there was bricks in the road and a lot of bricks on the sidewalk. And she called her father and said, you know, what should I do? And fortunately, it didn't hit anybody. But uh, he told me about it a couple days later. And... Like, wow, that's interesting. I expected to see articles in the paper or stuff on iBerkshire. And I, and I didn't see anything. Maybe I missed it. Uh, but I, I don't think it was in a Berkshire Eagle because, like, I read that today, and you can't miss anything it, in there. It's it pretty, wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't in print. It's, it's pretty weak, I'll tell you. But here and there. So that, that kind of upset me for a couple reasons. One of the biggest reasons is, is public safety. And like I said at the council when I, I spoke, Counselors, we have a wide, wide array of issues that we're involved in, issues we take care of, issues we try to alleviate, uh, setting ordinances for the city and things like that. But I feel as a city counselor, kind of because one of my little specialties, I think, is public safety. Uh, I've been on committees, I've chaired the committee, and it's ex extremely, extremely important because we're kind of the, a watchdog and we're taking care of the people. So looking back over that, I got thinking back to Beaver Street, probably 10 years ago, a piece of ledge fell down. Big deal. State came in, engineers came in, they put barriers up, closed. And it was out towards the Clarksburg line. Yeah, closed yeah. half the road for a number of years. And they kept it that way because it's still unstable. We want to err on the caution, so you had one lane. Now that's something that's been there hundreds of thousands of years, and a piece fell off, and granted, that's a public safety issue. So they did their due diligence, and now they reopen the, the lane because they feel it's stable enough, but there's still barriers there in case anything slides down. That's good. But you can also remember about three years ago, the St. Francis Church, which was closed down, some bricks fell in the road, and oh my gosh, instantaneous response to that, which there should be. Uh, it's a very busy intersection. It's a very high structure. Uh, so bricks fell. So they immediately, uh, the building department got in, they brought in engineers and people came from all over and they ended up in a very, very short period of time having an emergency demolition order, uh, which had to be paid for by the Diocese of Springfield, which I don't have a problem with, it's their property. Uh, but things happened very, very fast. And there was involved in that property, and I don't want to get open that can of worms, but there was other <laughs> agendas previous, which I had spoke about many times. Uh, so it was, things were taken care of immediately, cost a couple hundred thousand dollars, uh, but the building was taken down and public safety was restored. So as I'm looking at the, the mill, the abandoned mill on Union Street, and I can remember, and I'm sure you can 
probably four years ago, maybe, out to talk to him. Nick Mantello, with his drones, does some amazing photographs, and he did a, a flyover, and he had a picture. Pictures, yeah. Up it's, on, a, it's probably, you can probably look it up and find it, overhead of that mill. And that mill was basically empty. It was a wall, nothing inside there. All the beams and architectural structure had been taken out, and you could see it in the the parking lot, the western parking lot, it was beams were stored and stuff like that to be sold. And I always kind of thought, well, they're going to take the wall down. Well, they haven't. And I guess from what I was told, there was an engineering study done several years ago and said it's safe and secure. I don't believe it. I think it was proven not to be safe and secure. Uh, heaven forbid you have a small earthquake, which could happen at any time. You have a big, several hundred foot long wall, four or five hundred feet, I bet, anyways. Freestanding wall, masonry, which is very, it's very old, good shape, basically, but very old. And the sidewalk is open. So I'm, I'm going to be putting a paper forward to the council to, to, to bring it up before the council and probably bring it to the Public Safety Committee. Uh, I just find it amazing. Because I don't believe the engineering is, is current. I don't know if there's been an inspection on it. I don't know if there's insurance on it. I don't know who's responsible if you're walking on that sidewalk. I certainly wouldn't. So is the city responsible for that? Is the owner responsible? Does he have insurance? Uh, heaven forbid a tractor trailer comes down and slides off the road and hits that wall. The whole thing is going to I come mean, down. I mean, would it be a domino right down the wall? It could the be wall? a domino effect. Uh, the thing is, I remember four or five years ago that they had that fenced off. They had Jersey bumper barriers. Oh, they barriers did. They all did. the way up the street. Yep. People had to walk in the road. Yeah. If you were going up. Or walk on the other side and then cross over. Uh, it, it was, Which is very unsafe. It's a highway. It is. It's so to have them walking in the road, uh, you know, I can understand a side of being closed, which I still feel it should be closed, and uh, walk on the other side. Because now you got <laughs> sidewalks closed and you're going to walk up. Now you got to go a highway traffic right there. And then you've got a wall. And if you look at that wall, go up and look at it. If that thing, bricks start falling over, it's only about a four or five foot wide sidewalk. And, and then it's in a road. And I'm okay. estimating it's probably what, maybe 30 feet high? 30 to 40 feet? Oh, yeah, feet. 30 feet easy. Yeah. Easy so, and it's jagged. It's, it's, it's sawtooth. So if people aren't familiar with it, if you go buy it, it's a, it's, a saw, it's a very unusual type of uh, roof they had on that. <clears throat> so that's something, uh, I don't know, it, uh, it, con it concerns me. So we'll, uh, if I can get the paper in this for this next upcoming meeting, if not, definitely for the next. But uh, hopefully by bringing that up, there's been some uh, people looking into things. And, and that, that's basically my concern. And so I was talking to somebody today or yesterday and said, well, you know, they probably have to take it down. They probably can't afford to take it down because of the insurance or whatever. And uh, I'm like, hey, we need a new public safety building, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. Give us the building. Beautiful spot. <laughs> that's where we'll put it. You know, uh, it's a lot of land. The so thing, we'll see. The thing I remember was that uh, when Nick, Nick uh, Mantello took a few photos of it, he had one photo from the previous year, I believe it was, or the following year, I forgot which way, which way it was. <clears throat> one year it was empty. The next year he took it uh, just before winter set in, and there was all kind of vehicles cars, in there being yeah, sto yeah. stored. Trailers. And Boats, yeah. trailers, <clears throat> cars that were being stored in there. So that, that primarily, that's a, whoever owns it, that's their business, storage. Yeah. Uh, other than that. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but that's something... Uh, before the next calendar month is up, that's going to be, uh, that'll be brought before the council. I already talked to the uh, public safety chair, Jason, and I, I told him I'm going to bring that forward, and he was, he was all for it. And uh, Who's so, the chair? Uh, Jason, Jason LaForce. Jason LaForce. And then uh, Ben Lamb is on it, too. And uh, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But I think it's something the council should look into, uh, no matter what happens. <clears throat> I hate to be an after the after the fact of uh someone getting hurt or killed it's much like a few years ago when uh the Mo mohawk trail always bothered me once you got the hairpin turn there was no warnings for trucks and yes. you still had more than half of the trail to go into a populated area and there was no warning signs 
<coughs> and it was actually very easy. We went to the state, and uh, I was uh, under the Alkenbright administration, and uh, the mayor and I uh, went to the state. State came up, talked to us, uh, agreed with us, and, uh, and they put some signs up. I think there's six signs, which you know, if you're a trucker coming over, because I years and years ago, I, in, in the 80s, I worked on the ambulance, and I had more than one tractor trailer wreck up there, and any of the uh, people that I could talk to, the drivers, I always asked them, you know, kind of tongue in cheek, is this your first time, you know, over the uh, over the mountain, and every single one of them, you know, said, yeah, it, it was. Yeah. So it's yeah. a pretty it's dangerous been, road. There's been some dangerous accidents up there. Remember the time the, the fuel truck went up? Been some horrific. There was one that, what, two or three people came right down out of control, went right into the dam, Eclipse Dam, and all died. Oh, yeah, that was down, yeah. Then you had the two tractor trailers which it had on, and I, I've told my wife and many times in the years past, when you're coming up to that intersection, if you can take a left to go into Clarksburg, always be aware of what's going on around you. Uh, to have an out of control truck or somebody turning in front of you. Uh, I mean, you can imagine a bus or a, some, you know, soccer mom with five kids in a van and, you know, going through the intersection and have one of these trucks come barreling down. Uh, so whatever, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. So that's what we're doing. Six six four 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 zero eight, and while we're at it, da da. I don't know, Paul. Can you get a close up? Paul, can you close up on this? Anyways, these pamphlets are available at the city clerk's office, and it is United States Census 2020. What it matters to you in Massachusetts, and just the synopsis on this, it, it is, uh, this is how we get our, what is it, chapter 920, whatever it is, money from the from the federal government, was it chapter whatever? Oh, chapter 90, so chapter the 90. Uh, highway. Highways and byways. Highway, chapter yeah. 70 is schools. Schools, okay, so yeah. that, that's how we get our money, our tax money. Federal money, yeah. Federal comes. money, that's how we get some of it back. I know we pay it in. Boy, do I know we pay it in. Yeah. But that's how we get some of it back. So, so you got something laminated. Oh, I, I, I you got a lamination? No, no. it's tape. But I tell you, if you oh. go, if you go to my office, I literally, uh, I've been to your office from city council. The years past, I have boxes of, uh, I mean, it's kind of like the, you know, the presidents when they get out of office. I got to have a library. You know, I, yeah. I'm, I'm saving it for I don't know what. <laughs> but, library. Uh, I, I can remember. <laughs> counselors in the past, you know, asking about something that happened to come up and, you know, how do you remember that? You know, in every council paper, the, the envelope we get, if something of that catches my mind or something was said, I usually write it on the, uh, the envelope. So it's very, very easy for me to go back and research and look up things. And I, and I like doing that. Again, I'm not a, a Facebook guy. I'm not a computer guy. Uh, and the guy once told me, he said, boy, he goes, you're dangerous now. I can't imagine if you did it on a computer. <laughs> yeah, but you've got to talk to phone there. You know what I mean? That phone amazed me last the week. Because uh, it amazed we me. got lost. <laughs> it wasn't the idea of driving down we got lost. The phone helped us out. The problem we had was finding a car after. <laughs> so we won't let that happen again. So, no. <laughs> you know, and, you know, it's a smartphone. It's a sp and, you know, there was a comedian on TV talking. He's talking about the smartphone, how much they can do. And people call these smartphones. He goes, I don't think they're that smart. He goes, if I put my phone down, I can't find it. And I say, where the heck is my phone? And the phone says, I'm over here. <laughs> he said, that would be a smartphone. <laughs> so well, they do have things like for your keys. You oh, know, yeah. You yeah. Crack yep. and then you get a buzzer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't avoid it. And people have told me, don't talk about politics. But if we had calls and people want to talk about local stuff, I'd love to do it, but uh, I really enjoy national politics. Uh, truly enjoy it. Everyone knows what's been going on for the past three years. You know, this impeachment, you know, okay, the tr it's going on now, but this, the day he was elected, they said they're gonna do this. Before, but, the day before he yeah, was elected. they were gonna, you know, that, it, it, it's, it's unbelievable, but now it's almost comical, but, uh, I think it's about 285 days uh, from now, I th within a day or two, it's gonna be one of the second happiest days of my life. 
and that's when Mr. Trump gets elected again, and he can go down in history as being the only president who's been impeached who got elected. Yeah. But I'll tell you, and I know there's a lot of Democrats out there, and really, I love you, and I don't want to argue, and there's many, many people who we disagree with, and we have some nice discussions. Sometimes get a little heated, but you still remain friendly. Y'all got to live together, so let's not take it too seriously. But in all reality, I've known several people. We have close friends who are on the other side. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I've, I asked one of them particularly, who we were with weekly, I says, why don't you watch Fox News for one hour a week? I said, I don't care what hour. I don't care if you do two half hours. But I do watch MSNBC, CNN, things like that, and it amazes me. And if that's all you watch, that's all you watch, you're going to have that type of thinking. It's kind of like a brainwashing. And, I mean, there's commentary, and that's what the other side, I believe, is. There's a, there's a commentary, and there's a news. And when the news people are telling you stuff, their opinions and their network's opinion, that's not news. <clears throat> but I was thinking about the other day, I was watching, I don't know what I was watching, Hannity or one of them, and to look at the Democratic Party, I almost feel bad for you. You can remember, and you, it's such a fast pace of what goes on now. You had Michael Avenatti. He was, about a year, a little more than a year ago, he was the shooting star. Every time I'd watch CNN or MSNBC, they'd be talking about him, what a great candidate he was. And in six months, I forget what the numbers were, it was like five or six hundred times he was on TV. The new, new star, the new number one candidate for the, pres for the presidency of the United States and the Democratic Party came out of nowhere. Lawyer, very sophisticated, good-looking guy. The guy's going to go to jail. One of the biggest crooks gone. Oh, yeah. and, <laughs> and he was their shooting star. He came and gone. Now you got, they started out with a good, just like the Republicans did three years ago, a, a large amount of candidates put 15 or 16 of their best up there. It was unbelievable uh, for me looking at it from, I'm not a political expert, I got my own opinion. And that's, I'm not giving you news, I'm giving you, you know, according to Bob. <laughs> so you have these candidates up there and you've got Biden, who I believe is a crook, and uh, you know, it'll come come this way. You've got Warren, who I can't imagine anybody voting for Elizabeth Warren. Oh, I mean, she's she got the is minority locked up. So she is. She has. I'll tell you right now, Elizabeth Warren has absolutely, positively, no chance in the world. Of becoming president. No chance at all. Talk about socialism. She will pander to any group. I want to give free this, free health care. You got a college, I want you to go. She, going to, she wants to <laughs> abolish all student loans. Oh, she's, she's unbelievable. She has no chance. So that's, your, that's, another, that's one of your top three. And then you've got Bernie Sanders, who's basically a communist. If people, and I can't believe it's been covered up, and I can't remember the exact details, but I can remember about four or five years ago, his wife was the president of a college. She should be probably in jail. Go up and look it up, Google his wife, and see what she did to a college up in northern Vermont. You or I did it, we'd be in jail. No, the press doesn't mention it. Uh, a crook. She, they are so, did you see his, his people running his campaign in Iowa? The, talking about what's going to happen if Bernie doesn't get uh, elected, the mayhem, and what's going to happen, uh, basically all-out war. And they talk about us, you know, Hitler and what's going on. That whole group of that party, those liberals, they always preach tolerance. They are the most intolerant bunch of people I've ever seen. So it got so bad, and again, I'm like, who, who would you possibly pick on this group, okay? And they all went down, you know, this one, that one, Castro, and they're, they're just falling by the wayside. So it got so bad, you, you get someone like a Michael Bloomberg and Steyer, 
who are billionaires. And what do these billionaires do? They're Democrats, and what they do is they write out big, big checks for the Democrats. So the party is so bad that I could imagine being Michael Bloomberg saying, am I going to spend millions of dollars and donate to the Democratic Party when I think they're a bunch of imbeciles? I might as well spend the $30 million a month on me and promote my ideas. And, and the same thing with Tom Steyer. So that goes to show, in my opinion, how bad the party is. It's a joke. Then out of nowhere, with all the people they have in their party, they've got to really dig, and they've got to search, and they don't have enough candidates. So what could we do? Who could we have to come and save us? Du Duval Patrick. Yeah. I'm going to run for president. <laughs> now, uh, how he even got back page article. I mean, if there's one guy out there, and I, I mean, again, this is me. Duval Patrick has less shot than Warren. The only reason, the only reason he's out there is, geez, maybe someone will pick me for vice president. Or maybe a cabinet position. That's the only, I mean, I can't believe any other reason why he's out there. And I know there's people out there that, boy, I'll tell you, they're fuming right now and they're mad. And the only thing I can really tell you is change the station. Uh, because I think it's truth. Uh, Donald Trump, right from the beginning, and as you know, I've got criticized before and I got the card to prove it. Uh, way before I, I was for him. His accomplishments are so unbelievable. He just did this trade deal, and he's doing all this without any support of the other side. Uh, I mean, there's some pretty amazing things out there which you just don't see. Uh, partial list of, you know, Trumps. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's unbelievable making us energy pensions, prove the building of the Keystone and Dakota pipelines, uh, save the American people $3 trillion by withdrawing from the so-called Paris Climate Accord. I was on a council and they brought a, a resolution. I was totally against it. I said, this does not belong in the city council. Under my opinion, I voted against it. it came back, I went out and I printed up the Paris Climate Accord. It's only like, 10, 14 pages long. I read it. What? China, Russia, Indonesia, India, India. They pollute. They do all the pollution. Putting up coal factories left and right. Pollute everything. And they donate how much? They don't pay. We oh. pay. Oh, that's the reason why he pulled out. So you look at this meaningless piece of trash of that what the accord is and they make it sound like it's oh my god we should be crucified for this it was a joke so he pulled out of that and that was unbelievable trump has four consecutive quarters of three percent or more growth for the u.s economy by contrast barack obama, barack obama was the first president in history never to achieve three percent economic growth in a single year of his presidency in 2016, under Barack Obama's final year as a president, the economy grew 1.6%. That's the final year. We all know what happened when Trump got in there. But I've told that to people, and they say they couldn't have done it without Barack. He set it up. I said, yeah. Yeah, he, he set, set it up all right. He set the standards so low, it was easy uh, to do it. So I agree with that. Uh, U.S. economies created more than 2 million new jobs under President Trump. Remember when Obama got up there and said, manufacturing in the United States is dead. He it's also, over. He also said something that really got under my skin. Oh. Was, the United States is no longer a Christian nation. Oh, yeah. Which, no, you know, that, that he's not. Me. Oh, no. But, uh, you know, so two million new jobs. And this, this, most of this stuff's a year old. Uh, but, you know, it was dead. We, we can't do that anymore. Uh, unemployment rate. You know, in the manufacturing sec sectors, dropped to a record low of 2.6 percent. Basically, in this country right now, and there's pockets where it's very depressed and so on and so forth. But basically, anybody in this country who wants to work, anybody can work. 
in uh, North Berkshire, I believe there's 2,000 jobs posted. For, wow. you know, it might not be what you want, but if you want to work, you can work. And just over 50, I think, 0.1%, I believe, people in this country get some form of government subsidy or, you know, something, get something from it. Uh, more than $6 trillion in new wealth has been created by Trump. Uh, consumer confidence, which drives the economic growth in this country, uh, is an 18-year high. Average hourly wages are up. Welfare rolls are decreasing. More people, you know, get off the sofa and go to work. <clears throat> Food stamp use has plunged to a seven-year low. Uh, so there's just so, so many things. And I'll tell you, uh, I said this before, I, I'm independent. I used to be a Republican. I was dues-paying Republican for years and years. I'd get the pictures of the president signed and whatnot. And <clears throat> once the uh, Trump won, I oh. got out of the party because of people like Paul Ryan, who I was so glad uh, retired. All he did is talked about uh, the health care plan the Republicans had, and we've got this and this and this. And I actually believed them. I said, man, you know, they, they do have it, and it's being squashed, you know. Then all of a sudden, Trump wins. No one expected it. And when he talks about draining the swamp, he's not talking about Democrats. There's a great many Republicans who were, boy, mucky swamp monsters. Yep. And yeah. uh, so once he won, and then, you know, and Mitch McConnell, was he was along with him. But, but Ryan, when he wouldn't even let him go to Trump when he was running for president, go be up on the podium with him when he came to his state, turn me off. But uh, when I, I see what happened, you guys were blowing smoke up our butts. You guys had no kind of health care plan. You were right in the swamp. You're like, the whole bunch of you were together. Uh, Trump come in and changed it. So, you know, I've donated to Trump, past and present, but I'm still not a Republican. Uh, and we said this before, and you know the way this has got to change. <clears throat> You've got to have term limits. Term, uh, term. They're, they're in there too long. And there's pros and cons, and I've, I've, I've got articles on it and whatnot. Uh, I think the pros far outweigh the, outweigh the cons. You know, if term limits weren't great, you know, you'd have a presidential where you could stay in there forever. You shouldn't be able to. Uh, All right. You won't get qualified people. That's bull. You know, uh, I, I gotta just back you up a little bit. Yep. I was uh, when I turned 21. You couldn't vote until you were 21 when I was growing up. And I registered as a Democrat, and then I gave a speech uh, for a Sons of Italy organization. And um, Silvio Conti was there, and he approached me and said, "You know, Ed, could you help me out?" And, North Adams and Northern Berkshire. And I had an uncle that worked, you know, was up in the Republican Party, and I said, sure. So I went down and I changed to Republican. And after, after Conti left, I went back to a Democrat. And then I, I watched a while, and then I said, I can't be a Democrat either. And when they came out with this uh, unenrolled, you're not an independent, because there is an independent party in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. You're unenrolled. I quickly... Uh, disemboweled myself from the Republicans and the Democrats, and I just sit there and watch stuff. And I'm like you. When somebody says something on TV during a debate, uh, the, uh, um, the House impeachment process, uh, I watched it. And then I had friends on Facebook that said, did you watch the impeachment today? They said blah, 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 blah. And I went on to the internet and I looked it up and sure that's what that's what CNN said exactly word for word uh, they don't listen I put something on Facebook last week and I said this is not for me this is from somebody else and this is my cousin's post and he asked me to put it on mine because people read mine so I put it so I'm putting it on for him and I had three of my friends in fact one was a, a cousin of mine uh, actually, one of them, she called me up and said, how can you put something like that on? How can you believe in that? I said, read between, read it. it I already said it's not mine, it's somebody else's. But he's neither here nor there. I, I like that little 
uh, Pelosi says she did not want to impeach Trump. Oh, and yeah, she said that pontificating yeah. of this is this is a solemn blah 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 prayerful and we don't want this to happen and then you see her in her office you know taking pens and handing pens out oh yeah, yeah i put something I mean, yeah. they are such phonies i mean even if i was a democrat i have to say man you people are just phonies i got a brain i can think things out and uh it, it, it's unbelievable and i i love the uh you know the pencil neck you know when, when oh, trump yeah. i mean trump well you like him or not i mean he he has a way about him uh he is it's probably going to be biden and uh biden or bloomberg I mean, I think Bloomberg could come out of, come out of the out of the weeds here. Uh, then you'd have two New York City billionaires going against each other, and you'd have, you would have Trump with all the things he he's done and created, basically, almost by himself. I mean, he had no help from the Democrats. You know, they they signed one paper, and the Democrats, you know, got on board with it because they had to. But all the things he's done, and and what's Bloomberg? I mean. Remember Bloomberg, you know, you can't have a 32-ounce Coke. I mean, here's a here. He's a mayor of New York City, one of the richest men in the world. And he's, I, I hate government when they try and invade your life and, and do stuff like that. I mean, there's certain health rules and safety rules and things that, that are good. But, you know, what you can eat, yeah. how much it, this it you was, can it eat. Was, it was a 48-ounce drink, wasn't it? A 48-ounce slushy. You could not have a 48-ounce slushy. Or you could buy two 32-ounce slushies. Oh, I, if, I, if I was a business in New York City and you couldn't buy a 36-ounce, I would say, you know, buy one 20-ounce to get the second 20-ounce free. free. Yeah. You know, just, I mean, that's how these people think. They're just wasting everybody's time. So, I mean, there's just a cute little thing I saw, and I didn't get a chance to color it all in. I've been trying all week. But the, uh, it was one of the New York papers, uh, and they were talking about uh, free gonna, health care and things like that. Up, huh? And uh, what it was was they had to, it was one during, I believe, the second debate, and they were talking about uh, health care and who, you know, thinks we should get health care. And uh, so basically what it come down to is all, they showed all the people raising their hands and the, the title underneath it, who wants to lose this election? It's just absolutely crazy. I can't believe the people that are for it. But one other thing I got to get in, I got to mention that's happening. And uh, I'm sure some people could be upset, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, this week, Friday, it's the uh, March for Life. And I'll tell you, we're going to get into this more on another show, but I'll be going down to Washington. It's an absolutely unbelievable uh, showing down there. There's going to be hundreds of thousands of people and I get a little discouraged with it up here when you start talking to people but you go down there and there is hundreds of thousands of kids high school kids college kids are going to be down there it's a, absolutely amazing you won't see CNN you won't see MSNBC uh, none of the networks are down there covering it uh, past two years uh, Vice President Pence has spoke so I'll be going down there with a group from the area and uh, I'll report back and we'll talk more about this later Thanks for watching. We'll see you in two stay weeks. Stay safe and stay warm.